Without Mom Ruth. It's good to have Mom Ruth back, but in her absence, we found out we have a second piano player, so it's not all bad. And um, grab your song books. Oh, your song books. Oh, let's try that again. Open your Bibles this afternoon to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. I preached from this exact same text, exact same story, about three weeks ago. I'm not going to ask who remembers that message, Basi Ma Discourage Kol Mundang. Mark chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Unanas, amen. And I'm an Indo, but I'm a little bit of a boss. It's Mark chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. I walked into church tonight, and Brother Micah was standing behind my pulpit. So I thought maybe he wanted to preach tonight. And he said no. I, I don't know why. But, uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 3. English, we're not going to say, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Uksilami atung atukaniya nga nagadala sa uska nagsakit sa paralysis. Nga I hate that word. Nga giyayungan sa upat. Uksadiha nga sila dili makaduol nga tukaniya nga to ni Jesus. Tungod sa duot sa katauhan. Sila mitangtang sa atop sa dapit. Nga iyang nahimutang. I'm sorry. Nga iyang nahit mutangan, ug sa diha nga sila nakakuba na ni ini, ilang gipaubos ang higdaanan diin ang nagsakit sa paralysis, naghigda. The title of my message this afternoon, Sometimes It Takes More Than One. Usahai gi kinahanglan more than one. Labao sa usa? No. Kapin? Kapin? I like kopi. That's it. Kapin sa isa? Kapin kai sa isa? Sometimes it takes more than one. I'm excited about the message tonight. But I'm just going to pray and start the message instead of telling you about it before we pray. Let's pray. And I'll let you bring that up now, Jewel. Other than, rather than, I'll take that. I want you to pray that Julie didn't put any poison in here. Sometimes it takes more than one. Heavenly Father, please bless the simple message tonight. Would you fill me with your spirit as I deliver it? Now, Lord, my, my voice is weak. I thank you, God, that your power is just as strong as ever. I pray, God, that you'd work through my weak voice tonight. I pray, God, you'd empower my words. I pray you'd fill me in, with your spirit and guide me. I pray, Lord, that you'd do something among us tonight. Thank you for a church that's wants to serve you, a church that's doing right, a church that's going forward. Dear God, I pray that you can continue to bless us. Bless this message. Please fill me with your spirit. I thank you, God. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to take a sip and see if it helps my voice a little bit. That's actually pretty good. I think I'll drink all of it. Do you all mind? I'm just kidding. A few weeks in the Labai. 
Nagwag ko ikan ni ining text ni ining a story, exact same story, same exact text. I preached about this man and the story. This man and I palsy or something. I paralysis. He couldn't get out of bed. Well, that's not gonna go. Oh, na usi kataw lamang na katawan niya. There's only one man who could help this man. Who was that man who could help him? Well, who is the one who could heal him? Jesus Christ. Si Cristo lamang na ka ayo kaniya. Only Jesus. And what he needed was somebody to bring him to Jesus. Si Jesus ang nakatabang niya. Si Jesus ang nakaayo niya. Jesus is the one who can help and heal him. But if he couldn't get to Jesus, he wouldn't get the help he needed. Kung dili siya makaduol ni Jesus, dili siya makakuha sa tabang ng kinahanglan. What this man needed was someone to care enough to do whatever was necessary to bring him to Jesus. Ang kinahanglan siya nga naitawo nga andam nga mabuha bisanong sa nga kinahanglan aron mapadala niya nga to ni Jesus ang usa nga makatabang niya. Just one who could help him, Jesus Christ. But someone had to help bring him to Jesus. That was the message a few weeks ago. If you didn't hear it, you just heard a little bit of it just now. That day I used that message to introduce our transportation ministry that we are getting ready to start very soon. Many of you put your name on the list and said, Botko Mutabang, it's a transportation ministry. The interesting thing about that message is when I began preparing the message from this story, I was planning on preaching the message I'm going to preach tonight. And God changed my message and said, wait for that one, preach this one first. Tonight I'm going to preach the message I wanted to preach three or four weeks ago. Sometimes it takes more than one. Many of you signed up and said, I, I would be willing to help in the transportation ministry, I just want to let you know, we're getting close to starting. I'm going to start approaching some of our people. And those of you who put your name on the list, I'm going to start talking to some of our members about would you be willing to help on the route in, in Kawakawa or on the route in Tambak and Putol. Or, and I'm going to approach specific members. Very soon, I believe, we're going to start seeing visitors in our church again. When you have transportation routes, you tend to have a lot more visitors. I believe very soon we'll keep that as among a vista gikan sa Kawakawa, gikan sa Lourdes, gikan sa Tambak, and and other areas nearby. Very soon we're gonna have a lot more children running around back there in the back, driving Brother Michael and Brother Alwyn crazy, and um, fill up that junior church back there. Very soon we're gonna have more teenagers coming to church. I look forward to having more teenagers in church again. And I believe we're going to have teenagers from Kawakawa and Tambak and, and, and Lourdes and other places in the future. I believe very soon that Mom Irish's class over here in the little, the old nursery is going to start to get full and crowded. I like crowded Sunday school classrooms. I believe soon Gillette's classroom on the other side is going to get crowded <clears throat> because her students are fatter. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, just kidding. Don't get mad. But I believe we're going to start seeing new people in church. Visitors. We have visitors who don't know the proper way to behave in church. Get ready. Visitors talk in church. What am I talking about? My staff talks in church. Never mind. They can be on staff. They talk in church. We have visitors who don't know the right way to behave yet. We have visitors who kids who get up and walk out and walk back in and we say, sit down, stay in church. We have people who come to church who, who don't have the clothes yet. Maybe they girls won't. Girls ask all the time, and the answer is always the same. Of course. Of course. And then, of course, when they start to come, we teach them the Bible, and many times we give them a skirt. Many of our girls, we come on the mga sayal sa in the past. 
We're going to have visitors, children who come and make messes in the CRs. Welcome to the transportation ministry. The CR is the number one casualty. Amen. Where am I? Who helps clean? Brother Michael. Um, now Julie. It's coming. It's coming. We're going to have messes. Because when you bring new people to church, when you bring visitors, you bring lots of kids. Hey, when you love people, guess what? Some of the people who come make big messes. It's coming. Get ready. We'll probably even have some visitors who don't smell very good. It's going to happen. Hey, let me tell you something. Somebody needs to love that kid who smells bad. I'm going to tell you, when all these visitors start to come and we're bringing people in, because we all know what's going to happen. The first few weeks we'll have a lot of visitors and then some of them will kind of start to quit. We know, we understand that. And we should prepare ourselves for that so we don't get discouraged when it happens. When we start bringing these visitors in, you say, Pastor Mike, what are we going to do? I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to love them. We're going to show them. We're going to tell them about Jesus. And after they get saved, we're going to do everything in our power to get them to come back next week. I believe it's coming. I believe God is going to use our transportation ministry to change lives from all over the Pitan. Right now, we're just going to have two routes. Back here in Tambak, Lourdes, this area back here. And some, a little bit back in Putol. And then over there in Kawakawa, we're going to have two routes. Now, I'm still going to pick a plot on in the jeepney, but we're not going to call that a route yet. We're going to have two routes. But I can't wait until we can add some more routes. Excited ko para sa adlaw nga ang mga membro padayon mo tubo. And we have a, a more captains and drivers ready to start routes. I want to start a route in Lenable. I want to start a route in Talisay. What a place to bring people from. Dag hang tao. Sometimes we say dag hang bata. We need to remember the transportation ministry is for everybody, not just kids. For everybody. I would love to start a route in Polo. Oh, there's so many people in Polo. Dag hang tao sa Polo. I'd love to start a church in Santo Nino. Sulangon. You say, Pastor Mike, is there anywhere in the Pitan you wouldn't like to start a route? Not really. I'd love to send a jeepney to every part of the Pitan. Now, someplace that's it's not practical. Maybe one day we'll send a pastor there and start a church instead. But that means if we're going to start routes, we need some Christians at TBC here at Truth Baptist Church who will decide to be like the men in that story. These men said... We're ready to do anything that's necessary to bring you to Jesus. Can I say this afternoon, as before we start the route ministry, I just want to be very frank and upfront. The transportation ministry is all about sacrifice. Sacrifice time. Let me tell you something. It can be discouraging. You love people and then they quit. And then they run away and hide from you next week. Come on. Some of you used to do that to me. You can't even laugh. <laughs> and, um, Mom Connie, I'd go visit her. She'd run away and hide. I'm just kidding. I'd walk, I'd ride my motorcycle into Palada and and there's people with the basketball on, and then all of a sudden, boom, everybody's gone. Where'd they go? All the former members of Truth Baptist Church. We have a magician's act. Pastor Mike shows up, everyone disappears. I need a bus. <laughs> we 
Where am I in his outline? I got myself distracted. None of that was in the outline. Oh, can I tell you what we need? We need some Christians who are willing to sacrifice. Andam na magsakopisyo. Sayang time, sayang paningkamo, sayang gugma. Working on a route is a sacrifice. You have to be willing to visit the same people in the same area every week. Let me just say this real blunt. If you're a Ningas Kugan Christian, y'all remember Ningas Kugan? It's Tagalog. Dali excited sa sinugdanan, dali. Ay, kapoy, kikapoy na. Ningas Kugan. Right, Mom Connie is pretty close. Excited sa pag start. Dali ra kapoy mo undang. Ningas Kugan. If you're a Ningas Kugan Christian, I am more built net route ministry. Mo undang kasa week three. You want to be on a route? It's sacrifice. You have to get up early on Sunday morning. Route workers get up early. Here in the Philippines, it's not so bad. When I was in Bible college, our bus drivers, some of them had to get up at 3.30 in the morning. Drive all the way to Chicago. I mean, wintertime, cold. My dry sea to Chicago, and they would check the bus out. Because um, in our church, we rented a lot of our buses from the public schools. It was cheaper than buying buses. So, nagabang me some of the buses. I remember sometimes I went with those drivers in the morning. I never wanted to, but sometimes I did. 3.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock, be at Mesa Bible College, my drives to Chicago. When you think of it that way, getting up at 6 ain't so bad to go on the route. But you want to be on a transportation route, you can't sleep in until 7. You need to be on the route by 7. Basin 7.30, pinakaulahi, 7.30, kinana nanaka. You wake the kids up at 7.30, that gives them an hour to get ready. Then they need to be on the motor cab or on the jeep and you head into church. It's a sacrifice. You visit the same place every Saturday. You love the kids. You pray for them. And then on Sunday, you get up early and you get dressed when it's when no, before anybody else is up. And you, you go to the area and you go through. Ayo, ayo. You try to wake people up. And uh, and parents don't want to wake their kids up. And uh, it can be frustrating. After church ends, you don't get to just relax and go home. You have to help get the kids home. What I'm saying is the transportation ministry is sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. And just like those men who said, we will carry the bed. And they get to the house. They said, fine, we'll take you up on the roof. And we'll put a hole in the room. Buhatun na to bisa nuns na gikinahangla na roni ka mukita ni Jesus Cristo. That's what that's what the transportation ministry is. Christians who say I will do anything to get people to Jesus Christ. But tonight I'm not really preaching about the transportation ministry. It's on my heart because it's getting close. That's not really the message tonight. I want you to look with me at verse three. Do you have your Bible? Look with me at verse three. I think you take a sip here. Mark chapter 2, verse 3. Kung nana, say amen. amen. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy. Look at this next sentence, statement. Which was born of four. Na yiyayongan sa upa. Now this, this afternoon, I want to ask you a very deep doctrinal Bible question. Are you ready? Institute students, are you ready for a hard question? Are you ready? Extra credit needs to suit guy. Are you ready? This man, Kinahanglan Shah Mokita Ni Jesus, he needed to get to Jesus Christ. Here's the question. You have to read the verse carefully. How many people did it take to get him to Jesus? I haven't finished it yet. Excited guy. How many people, watch. How many people did it take to get into Jesus? Four. 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 Watch now. It didn't take just one. It took four. If it had been only one person, oh, that might have been difficult. Can you imagine how hard it would have been for one man to carry the paralyzed man to Jesus? 
and then he gets there to the whole house and he can't get inside? How would you like to be the paralyzed man being lowered on the bed by one man? It took four. It took four. I want to give you an illustration tonight. Alvin, come here. Suerte si el buen dalera. This is the time all the ladies say, thank God I'm a woman. And, um, all right, Alvin, you have, you have palsy tonight. How does it feel to have palsy? Tell, tell us, we want to know how you feel, Alvin. You can't move. You're sick. Please, Alvin, tell us how you feel. Uh, <laughs> all right, lay down. You have palsy. Hey, that now. Hurry up. That's it, daddy. Now this man here, he needs to see Jesus. Now I want you to imagine only one person cared enough to help get him to Jesus. Usara. Now only, there's only one who cared enough. Now usara nga andam magsakripisyo. Now usara nga na igugmat niya. Now usara nga andam mabuak bisan onsin ng gikinangan. There's only one who's ready to do anything that's necessary. So here he comes. Oh Albert, Albert, I feel so bad for you. Jesus can help you. I need to get you to Jesus, Alvin. I'm going to do it. Whatever it takes, Alvin, I'm going to help you get to Jesus, Alvin. You can't move. You can't move. You can't move. Alvin, I'm going to... Alvin, I'm... I'm Alvin, 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 I'm sorry. I'm going to... I'm going oh, to help you, Alvin, to see Jesus. Uh, 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 do what I need. Do what I need. I need some help. Brother Julius, come help me. Come help me, Brother Julius. Brother Julius. Brother Julius. Come here, Brother Julius. This is my friend Alvin. Alvin, can I have a job? Keep me in school. The Lord took me up. He came up on my boat. He came. I can one foot. He came up with one hand. Got it. Ready? Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, all right. We'll go this way. Come on. All right, I'll take his hand. I think his feet. There we go. Here we go. Let me get a hand. Stop me. No. Ready? Here we go. We're going to carry him. Here we go. Oh, okay. Here, boy, let's put him up here on the chair. I think we need some more help. Brother Albert, brother, my brother, brother, you stay right there. You're, you're at fault. Brother Michael, brother JD, come help us. All right, brother, brother, uh, no, wait, 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 brother, brother Michael, you can take his shoulder. Brother, brother JD, you take his other shoulder, and we'll each get a leg. All right, here we go. Here we go. Ready? Grab his shoulder, so over at the dog's off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, put him down. Are you sure you want to see Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Lingo, sir. Eldwin, who got on the monks? Me now, it's an eight-tabo. Wala ka nang lava, karong si Mana. Ah. Watch now. Listen to what I'm about to say. If only one person is willing to sacrifice, and only one person is willing to struggle, or only two or three people are willing to struggle, only two or three people are willing to do whatever is necessary, <clears throat> we probably won't bring a lot of people to church. We probably won't bring a lot of people to Jesus. Truth Baptist Church, I want to remind you something this afternoon. If we were to take our whole ministry and explain it in one sentence, it would go like this. We're trying to bring people to Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I just said? Jesus Christo. Tungon siya ang makatabang kanila. And we're, listen, listen to what I have to say here. First, we're trying to bring people to Jesus 
for salvation. Kung wala pa sila na luwas, our first goal is get them saved. Listen, we don't bring them to church for four weeks and then try to get them saved. Kita mag-share nila sa first visit. First visit, they come to church here, they ought to get a chance to be saved. Basin dili sila maminaw, basin dili sila maluwas, but we're going to give them a chance. We go out soul winning. Why? We're trying to bring people to Jesus. But then, after we bring people to Jesus for salvation, then we're trying to bring them back to Jesus again for strengthening. That's the closest Pastor Mike ever gets to alliteration. Watch me now. Magdalat ni tao ni Jesus para sa kaluwasan. Dayon, kung naluwas na, what we need to do? We need to go back and get them and bring them back to Jesus again so Jesus can give them strength and help them grow and change their life. I, I, are you listening to me tonight? We're not done doing our job after they get saved. Kung naluwas na sila, nagstart lang. That's just the beginning. Now we need to bring them to Jesus again. And I said it a few weeks ago. On Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, Jesus is at Truth Baptist Church. Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, Nasi Jesus, Din Hes, the Truth Baptist Church. Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock, Jesus is in the building. Jesus is here. And our goal is to get somebody saved and then bring them back to Jesus over and over. Saying, hey, stay close to Jesus. Come on, stay close to Jesus. Sean, like a change, Simon Kinabuhi. Watch. Here's the message tonight. Are you listening to me tonight? Are you listening? Here's the message tonight. It often takes more than just one person to bring somebody to Jesus. It's a dog hung situation. Kinahanglan must. How was that again, brother? Kapin sa usa? Kapin kay sa usa. Nga mudala sa mga tao ng ato ni Jesus. Our goal is to bring a person to Jesus and then go get them and bring them again. So, and then go get them and bring them again until Jesus has changed their entire life. Listen, it doesn't take just one person. Listen, it requires an entire church working together. Kinahanglan ang tibok I'm sorry, ang tibook simbahan. Nga naninkamo, nga naghago, nga nagtrabaho, pagtingo. Working together, serving together, loving together. Turn with me to John chapter 4, verse 37. John chapter 4 and verse 37. <clears throat> John chapter 4 and verse 37. <clears throat> Kung nana, say amen. amen. I think my voice is doing a little better. John 4 37, and herein is that saying true. Watch. One soweth and another reapeth. Verse 38. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. Listen to what I say right here. When someone gets saved and their entire life is changed over the next few years, that is always the result of team effort. Kana ang result sa tibo o team, tibo o simbahan nga nag na or naningkamot naghagot naghagot. Sorry, pagtingo. A changed life is always the result of many people's efforts. Sometimes one person sows and another person reaps. Usay us kita mo tanom pero ang lain tao mo ani. Watch. 
They're on the same team. Are you listening? They're on the same team, and it takes both of them to get somebody to Jesus. Allow me to create another illustration. I'm going to be using a lot of people tonight. But Julius, let me use you again. Stand right here, Brother Julius. Stand over there, Brother Julius. No, just kidding. All right, this is Brother Julius. No, he's not a brother yet. He needs to be saved, but his heart is hard, full of evil and wickedness, and most importantly, he is ugly. All right. Now watch. Watch this. Alden, come here. No, I can use a girl for this. Beth, come here. Hurry, hurry. One day, a young lady's out soul winning, and she gives Julius a track. Give him a track. Yeah. <laughs> stand right here. Now wait, 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 wait. You can keep it. It's fine. He accepted the track, and he starts to read it. Wait. She just planted the first seed in his heart. Did he get saved? Did she get to reap the harvest? Shang Nagani or Wala? No, but she planted a seed. And then, stay with me here for a second. Now, when she gave him the track, Billy got on Mami now, but he read the track. A little while later, his neighbor, he has a neighbor who's saved. Eldon, come here. You be a saved. Eldon's not saved. He's the okay. Come on, Eldon. Hurry up. Come here. Come here. And Aldwin, his neighbor, invites him to come to church. He doesn't come, but he invites him. And then he's got a coworker, a friend at work. Come here, little boy. And little boy is kind to him and helps him. At work. See, little boy, co-workers. And he notices that. He says, this guy's different. Stay with me now. Little boy, come over here. Now you, let me say something right here. When a Christian acts like a Christian, the world notices. They may laugh at you. They may mock. They may ignore it. But they notice. And he notices one day an attitude in the little boy like he's kind, he's respectful. <laughs> sometimes he, sometimes he's nice. Well, one time he did something. No, okay. But anyway, stay with me. Are you seeing the progression here? She planted. He planted. He planted. Then a little while later, another soul winner comes along. Come here, Michael. He gives him another track. And he says, nah, nah. This is what they always say. Nah, nah. I said, okay, read it again. Take it. All right, go and stand over there, Michael. And then one day, watch, watch. He's got those sitting on his, in, his, in his bedroom. Or maybe it's sitting in, on the table in the kitchen. One day, he gets a phone call. Angimo mama. Not now. <laughs> a little bat lung anyway. <laughs> Watch. He gets a phone call and it's his dad. And his dad says, your mama's in the hospital. I mean, my mama in the hospital. And all of a sudden, his life gets shaken. And you know what he does? He goes back. He pulls out the paper and he reads it again. And God starts working on his heart. And then at the right moment, at the exactly right time. Come here, Brother Felix. Brother Felix, dale. <laughs> hurry, hurry. Watch now. At the right time. Watch. And the soul winner leads him to Christ. Now you listen to me very carefully. Sha ang nag ani. Pero si lang tanan nakapil sa iyang salvation. Are you listening? Nobody can say, 
I am 100% responsible for him. No, no, no. It's a team effort. It's a team effort. Thank you. You'll have a seat. Good job, Brother Felix. You're a good solo. Good job. I say, him, when it comes to salvation, maybe sometimes the first time a soul owner approaches, Maluasila. Many times that's not how it works. But the difference is we don't know about all those things. Only God knows that. But God is working and he uses more than one person to bring a lost soul to him. Are you listening to me tonight? But the same thing is true. Regarding bringing people back to Jesus so they can grow. Listen. Kung naluwas ang tao, pero dali siya mo balik sa simbahan, dali siya mo dul ni Jesus, dali siya mo tubo. He's not going to grow. He's not, his life is not going to change. Ang inkina buhay, dali mao soom. We've got to get him back close enough to Jesus so Jesus can change him. Kinahanglan siya magadungog sa pagtudlo sa pulong sa Diyos. Kinahanglan siya magadungog sa pagwali sa pulong sa Diyos. And bringing a person back to Jesus week after week after week after week. Listen, it's just like bringing them to Jesus the first time. It takes more than one. Let's see here. Michael, come here. Let's let Michael be a transportation ministry rider. Where do you live? Tambak or Kawakawa? Huh? That's true. You do live in Kawakawa. That's very true. You have a terrible family, though. I know them. Okay. Especially your dad. All right, here we go. So we have a boy here. He saved. Maybe a soul winner on the route led into Christ, or maybe somebody went to Kawakawa in the past. There are kids and adults and teenagers all over the Pitan that are already saved. Daghan na luwas na tungo si soul winners dali karong gabi. All over the Pitan, there are saved people because of our soul winners. So let's say he's already saved, but he's not coming to church. Now, what does he need? He needs to get close to whom? Jesus. Kinahangan siya modolni, which means he needs help, right? He needs help. So if we're going to get him to Jesus, we need some people to help him get to Jesus. So first, Brother Michael, why don't you come up here and help me, Brother Michael? Aren't you glad you're ladies tonight? Amen. And uh, so Brother Michael, why don't you stand right here next to him? So if we're going to get him to Jesus every week, the first thing that has to happen is Saturday morning, a route worker or a route captain needs to go visit him. That means the route worker needs to get up on time on Saturday morning, come to the soul winning meeting, and then have a list so he doesn't forget anybody. Sometimes we forget about that part of the transportation ministry. Dog hung through the details. Lots of notes. Where do they live and who's the mom and dad and what did the parents say? Notes, notes, notes. So he's got his list. And he goes on Saturday and he visits this, this handsome young man and... Um, it's okay, it's not lying if you're in church. And uh, anyway, and he, he says, Hey man, your Aunt Nelly Peko, we come like a Simba the last week. I want you to come tomorrow. It's going to be so much fun. And he visits him. And Michael says, I will go tomorrow. But that's not the end. The next day, he has to get up early and come back and wake him up. And that's not the end either. Then we need a driver. Now, in this case, he's a driver. We'll pretend he's not a driver. Come here, Brother Julius. You get to be a driver today. And you got to be lost. And look at this guy. Look at this spiritual growth. Just five minutes ago, we left Shanaluas Karona drive Shasta Transportation Ministry. Hallelujah. All right. So he goes and visits him on Saturday, goes back, Mubalik Shah Domingo Sabuntag, Mag Pukau Nia, wake up, you're awake. And Mag Pukau Shah, and Nia, and then when he's ready, the driver has to come and pick him up. You see, telling, getting people to come to church doesn't work unless you have a driver. Unless you have Plete. But you gotta do something. You gotta have a driver, so the driver goes to his house, and the driver picks him up and takes him to 
church. Then when he gets to church, he gets to church, and there's somebody standing outside. Hey, man, Nali Nakadri, welcome to Truth Baptist Church. Here, come on over here. I'll find you a seat. You can sit right here, right there, man. I'm sorry about the ugly people close to you, but you'll be all right right there. And, and then, then he has the Sunday school opening. Come here, Brother JD. You're our Sunday school opening guy. Come on, over. Come on here, Brother JD. There we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Beth. I need you too. Beth, come here. Okay, you sit right here. Sit right here. So we sit him down, and then we have Brother JD leads the opening in Sunday school. And he says, hello, hi, hello. And, it, and not anymore, delete now. Uh, Peekaboo. And had so much fun letting us see la. And then Michael goes off to his class with Brother JD. And then Mom Irish, can I use you? You're a teacher for the girls. Come on, come on, here we go. And Mom, and Mom Irish goes with that over here. And, and uh, so they're over here and they have their class. And I shouldn't have had you go first. I need you. <sighs> Brother Nestor, can you help me, Brother Nestor? Come here, Brother Nestor. You, you sit down. You're the junior church captain. You sit down. Okay, you stand right here. You're now. You're the temporary route captain and worker. And um, then um, um, they they have Sunday school and it's so much fun. Here, my mind watch slide over here for me. And they finish Sunday school and then it's junior church time. Come on, Mr. Junior Church man. And brother Michael has a sermon ready and he's got his songs. And brother Alvin has his dumb games. And it's so much fun. Ling out to a junior church. And the kids look around and say, Wow, I've been a boring guy. How many of you grew up thinking church was boring? And then you came to Truth Baptist Church, you found out church isn't boring. It's crazy. And uh, we have so much fun. Are you, are you seeing what I'm talking about here? Are, are you seeing it? It takes more than one. The kid who, listen, the kid. Maybe he won't love everything as much. Maybe he'll love his route captain. Or Basina a special relationship with a young driver. Or maybe he'll have a special relationship with his Sunday school teacher or her Sunday school teacher. Or maybe they'll have a special love for junior church. But the key is we want something that makes him think, I want to go back next week. Are you listening? It takes more than one. Thank you, you might be seated. Salama. It takes more than one. By the way, by the way, in all seriousness, that's one of the reasons I don't let Sunday school teachers work as route workers. Because I want two different people. Because maybe they'll be close to the Sunday school teacher, or maybe Basin Soud's a route worker, but if there's two, there's a better chance we keep them. Are you following me? Same thing is true with teenagers. I won't make people come up for this illustration. Pero prio para sa mga batanon. Imagine a teenager who lives in Kawakawa. Maybe 16 years old. He's got, got an earring in his ear. He's got kind of long hair. He's got holes in his jeans. He looks cool, like what the world calls cool. Now, how is he going to feel when he walks into a Baptist church and all the girls wear modest skirts and the guys dress nice? He might feel a little uncomfortable, Deba. Now, that doesn't mean we should change anything, but we need to be aware he's going to feel a little uncomfortable. So this teenager walks, he comes in and the motor cab parks out back and he gets off the motor cab and one of our teenagers walks in and says, Hey, my wouldn't that first time not? Hey, come on, I'll show you where our class is going to be. And then he meets the teacher, meets his Sunday school teacher. She meets her Sunday school teacher. I lost my place in these notes. I'm sorry. And someone else says, hey, you can sit with me if you want. Hey, that's how you treat visitors. Are you listening to me? That's how we treat visitors. Hey, that's how we treat visitors. Then while he's standing there waiting for church Sunday school to start, we're out here in the opening, and Usher comes up and says, Hey, have you filled out a yellow slip yet? Have you filled out a, oh, well, I don't have any more. And we help him. Or you can fill it up, but we help him. 
Then he goes to Sunday school opening. He finds out all the adult and high school members of Truth Baptist Church are retarded. And we have so much fun in Sunday school opening. Ling out to it. At least I do. Besting kamu lai ngila ai. Put on the leap goes to Sunday school opening. And, uh, but he comes to Sunday school and he says, hey, they actually have fun in their church. It's not boring. Then he goes to a Sunday school teacher. He goes to his Sunday school class. Or she goes to her Sunday school class. And a teacher stands up in front who walked with God all week long. Naglakao ban sa Jos, nagampo para sa yung mga students. A teacher who studied the lesson for that week. Wala siya naghula ang tod sabado sa gabi. Oh, na kwa lesson ukma. Unsa kung lesson? Nalimot ko. Oh, no, no. He studied all week long. Nagandam siya sa yung lesson. The teacher stands up, teaches the word of God. There in the class, he notices. Nakita siya ang Latin students. They're interested. Interesado sila sa pagtudlo. They 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 enjoy it. They don't look bored. They smile and they nod and they agree. They don't distract. They don't laugh. They're respectful. By the way, can I say something right here? Young people, listen. Look at me. If you want our church to grow and succeed, support your Sunday school teacher. Kung siya magtudlo, hilom di ha? Ayan magtabi-tabi. Siya nagtudlo sa pulong sa Diyos. Ayan magtabi-tabi. I got the Starbucks, Casa, Latin. There's visitors. And you act, well, this is boring. So then, <laughs> Don't talk while the teacher's teaching. Support the teacher. Nod your head. Smile. If you're a man, say man. But don't yell it too loud. There's other classes. What I'm saying is, you want to be a part of the of the of the solution. You want to be a part of helping people. Don't talk during Sunday school. Support the teacher. Support the program. Hey, listen. Pay attention. Smile. But this teenager, this guy or this girl, he goes through Sunday school. And then after the Sunday morning, Sunday school, he goes to the morning service. And almost anyone who comes to this church has never been to a church like this one. They've maybe been to Catholic church and they've been to rock and roll churches, but they've never been to one like us. And he walks in and the first thing he notices, man, getting, getting, they sing loud and they sing like they believe it and they sing with joy. They act like they like church. Wow. He looks around and he thinks, I think these people actually love God. And then the preacher stands up and starts to preach. And the young guy sits like this in his chair. Pastor Mug starts him inside. He's never heard preaching like that. And he thinks, Buong kayo, Americano! But then he hears people behind him say, Amen! preacher and he realized you know what all these people here agree with the preacher can I tell you something you don't say amen for my sake you say amen for your sake and for the sake of the people sitting around you it's good for everybody else to know I agree with what the preacher just said He looks around, he says, wow, they really believe this. Hey, they're interested. They laugh at the pastor's jokes. Here's what I'm saying this, this afternoon. It takes more than one person to get somebody to Jesus. Are you listening? 
Are you listening? It takes more kinahanglan, kapin, kaisa usa. Sa pagdo. Come on in, Marife. In Buntag, welcome. In Buntag, may have one. In Buntag, ganiya. In Buntag, ugma po. In Diyos, naging on ako. We could keep giving illustration. The same thing is true with adults. Are you listening? Put it on, on, come on, 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 it takes more than one to get them in and keep them. Watch. It's not enough for the pastor to say, hey, I want you to come back. They need to hear everybody else in the church say, hey, Bobali Casano Domingo. It takes more than one. It takes a whole church to bring an adult to Jesus and help him, change, help him stay close to Jesus so Jesus can change his life. Let me show you. Do you know what the reason is that many churches don't grow? I'll show you. Because there's only one person, the pastor, maybe the pastor's wife, who's trying to bring people to Jesus. So let's pretend Jesus is here in front of the auditorium. So the pastor says, I gotta bring people to Jesus. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring people to Jesus. I gotta bring people to Jesus. All right, you stay right there. Did you hear what I said? All right. Come on, I gotta bring somebody else. Oh, I gotta bring somebody else to Jesus. Come on, come on. I want Jesus. Get out of my cup. Look. What I wait, I gotta bring people to Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Bring Jesus. Isn't that kind of what happens in a lot of churches? Thank you, Alvin. Go back to your seat. We didn't really want you to come. <laughs> I thank God. Nagpasalama ko sa Diyos na yung gihatay na ko ang simbahan na napuno sa mga tao na ganahan mo dala o uban ni Jesus. This church has accepted my vision. It's not just the pastor out soul winning. It's not just the pastor teaching Sunday school. The young pastor na lang. This church is full of people who are trying to make a difference in the lives of others. Sophia, then I'll call. People sitting behind Sophia, then I'll call. Listen. Nagpasalama ko sa Diyos. Na itaw dere nga andan nga magsakripisyo aron moduo mopuduo sa tao ni Jesus. Thank God for our soldiers. Thank God for our Sunday school teachers. Thank God for our ushers. Thank God for our people in the music ministry. Thank God for our junior church workers. Thank God for our nursery workers. And I thank God for our future transportation workers. You say, well, Pastor Mike, which which is the most important ministry in the church? Well, let me ask you a question. Which is the most important wheel on your motorcycle? You say, Pastor Mike, we need both of them. Right? How about the back wheel? back wheel? So which is most important? Both. Are you listening? Which is more important, the Sunday school teachers or the route workers? What good is it to have route workers if we don't have Sunday school teachers? But if we have Sunday school teachers, we need route workers to help bring people to Sunday school. Which is more important? Both. Okay, how about this? I lost my notes, my place in my notes. I'm sorry. Where did that all let go? Oh, here we go. Which is more important in the jeepney? The gasoline, the oil, the coolant, or the transmission fluid? 
Unos opina que importante, gasolina, oil, coolant, más como coolant, más como buena esa máquina, coolant, o transmisión fluid. I'll give you a hint. All of them. You say, well, Pastor Mike, if you had to choose one, you couldn't have one, which one would it be? Well, we wouldn't have a jeepney. Con la transmisión fluid, me da un, un tipo o jeepney. Are you listening? Con la transmisión fluid, me da un tipo o jeepney. Well, I gasoline, they let me drive. Un tipo jeepney, me honong na. Con la oil, me da un tipo jeepney. Con la coolant, me da un tipo jeepney. You listen. Con la wallet, me san un sing bahin sa mo ministry, me da un tanan. You listen. Every part. Every part, every part is equally important. Here's the challenge this evening and we're done. Whatever your place is in the ministry, decide to give it your best. Not decisions, apaghatag, saimong, kinamaayohan. If you're a teacher or a student, give it your best. One of the biggest mistakes we make as students is we think, well, I'm just a student. No, a student is a part of the class. A student is part of the atmosphere. You're not the leader, but you're important. If you're a route driver, route worker, route captain, give your best. If you're a nursery worker, a junior church worker, a choir member, a piano player, or an usher, give your best. Give your best. Give your best. I can't sing tonight. If I could, I'd sing the song, I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus? Naghimo ka ako alang ni Cristo sa kong kinamaayohan tungod siya namatay alang kanako ang ayan siya I lost the words. I don't have them written down. Ang ayan siya sa akwang tanan. Can I challenge you tonight? Give your best. Ihatag ang imong kinam ayohan. Whatever you're doing for God, give your best. I didn't say be perfect. I said give your best. Give your best. If you're in the transportation ministry, give your best. If you're in the Sunday school as a teacher, give your best. Give your best. For him. Paranea. Don't compare yourself to, to other people. We have an expression in English. Don't compare apples and oranges. Ayan mga kampara sa mga apple and orange. Manzanas. Is it manzanas? And orange. And <laughs> don't worry. The only thing God's going to look at is your potential. Ang Diyos magkampara ni mo sa imong kaugalingon mahimo. Give your best. I preach strong. I do. But I only have one request and only have one desire in the lives of our members. Growth. Growth. Just keep going forward. Listen, if you are going the right way, I am satisfied with your, with your growth. Just give your best. Give your best. And let God use you. Whenever head bowed, every eye closed.